My perspective is how I see things. It's completely changed since I began worshiping the Holy Ghost as the Lord my God. You can, like I said, you can receive what I'm saying or not. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's why I keep sharing these things. I'm not trying to build myself up saying, oh, I've been, I've been around a long time. I've been preaching from this Bible for a long time. I know all the doctrines. I've preached most of them. And I'm telling you that this, worshiping Him as God, will radically change you to the degree you don't even know what you were doing before. That's how good it is. Come on, come on. Use of the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost. I was given those words. What do you want me to not tell you them? He said, use these words. So I use them. What do you mean use them? What well, somebody says, use words, what, what are you going to do with them? You're going to say them. Yeah. Say his words. I worship you, Holy Ghost. And I preached them. And I preached them, and I preached them, and I preached them some more, and I said them, and I said them, and I preached them some more, and I'm telling you from experience, it has done things to me and for me that nothing else can or will. It has completely, completely changed my thinking, my believing, and my living. I'm different now. You know, I say that people go, oh, yeah, you mean when you got saved? No, I was saved for like 25, 30 years in the ministry preaching. This has changed me from that. Come on. That guy who I used to like. Now, I don't know. I don't like him that much anymore. But that's okay. I'm going to the future. Who takes you to the future? We went over this. Holy Ghost takes you to the future. You get on a Holy Ghost train. Takes you to the future. What's the future of my ministry? What's the future of my business? Holy Ghost! Who's gonna, he's going to take you there. Why do you think I worship him? Because he's so good. And I'm not talking about the gifts of the Spirit. I'm not talking about the anointing. He gives gifts. He gives anointings. But he is God and he's with me and the closer you're with him the better you still here yeah. use of the words I worship you Holy Ghost will completely transform your life if you don't use them not so much you can go on the way you were I love you anyway right yeah. I have to you're not stopping me I've come too far I'm in the pool swimming. Don't come up and tell me there's no water in there. <laughs> Too late for me. And I'm never going back. I'm telling you, I'm never going back. I will never go back. I, I used to be back there. I know what it was like. But I'm now in the future. I've never said that before. I'm in the future. I'm speaking to you from your future. Look at me to see what your future looks like. I'm telling you, worshiping him will radically change your life, your situation, your Bible. Preachers that preach for 20 years should know their Bible. Am I right? I started worshiping the Holy Ghost. I got a brand new one. It says things completely differently now. How'd that happen? And I'm still reading the same one. King James. Yeah. <laughs> but I use the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost, and I've been obedient, and I am faithful. Amen. I'm faithful because I'm using these words, and I'm preaching these words. Yeah. And hopefully, listen, you're going to use them, and things are going to start happening. Yeah. Say, I'm going to use them, and things are going to start happening. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is your head's going to say, don't do that. Don't worship the Holy Ghost. You're not supposed to do that. Shut up, devil. That devil's trying to tell me not to worship God, the Holy Ghost. Right. But I'm not the same. 
and if you can hear it you can have it hearing is a key to entrance if you can get people to hear then they can have what they're hearing Jesus said it all the time he who has ears to hear let him hear Amen. by the way preaching is a diversity of operations mm -hmm. it will do something that nothing else will do right. it's the foolishness of preaching because right. we're speaking words by the Spirit of God and if you hear them they will take you to where those words came from right. say where those words came from they're coming from me right now with the Holy Ghost and I stand in this place as a Holy Ghost worshiper because he's God he's the one that Jesus sent into the earth I'm saying them to you and you can do with them whatever you want to do so did you get that yeah. the diversities of operations is something that does something different diversities mean different of operations it operates differently it does something different Worshiping the Holy Ghost is a diversity of operations and it will do something different for you that nothing else will. I am called to make you Holy Ghost worshipers. Mm -hmm. I never heard it before. No kidding. Most people have never heard this before. It's just hidden from religious dogma that says you shouldn't go there. John 4 24 we won't turn there just because I've got so much to do but John 4 24 says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth everybody knows this verse of scripture God is a spirit who is the God who is a spirit the Holy Ghost is God he is a spirit obviously it's in his name God is a spirit they that worship him I am a they that worship him you're looking at one I am a they say I am a they that worship him God the Spirit I say this I do this I'm scriptural maybe you aren't in the year write this down remember you're in school in the year 3000 I mean 325 AD there was uh, this document called the Nicene Creed. Preachers should know about this. Nicene, I believe it's N I C E A, uh, N I C E N E Creed. And it's when the our you know our four five, five fathers, how many fathers there were, they got together, and they wrote what was going to be considered orthodox dogma. This is what a real believer believes. Mm -hmm. And you go and you read it and you're like yep I believe that 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 Jesus was raised from the dead he bore our sins according to the scriptures rose on the third day all these things as a father in heaven and then the last line it says and we believe in the Holy Ghost that was it so they're talking about the father they're talking about Jesus and they're talking about the Holy Ghost all God right are you here I'm just I'm trying to lead you up to something follow me they laid out what was considered orthodoxy then in the year 381 it's like 50 some 56 years later the first council of Constantinople met and they refined it further you know how when you've lived for 50 years you go you know what we need to make a few adjustments they didn't change any of the of the facts but one of the big things they did was they said they expounded this part where they just said the Holy Ghost we believe in the Holy Ghost they expounded this belief and expanded it and said believing in him the Holy Ghost as the Lord and giver of life who is to be worshiped the Lord and giver of life the Spirit the Holy Ghost talking about the Holy Ghost who is to be worshiped the forefathers in 381 AD all agreed that the Holy Ghost was God they called him the Lord and giver of life and they said he is to be worshiped that was a while back this is what was considered orthodoxy are you here yes. 
My calling him the Holy Ghost Lord, giver of life, and worshiping him is orthodoxy. Straight up. This is what the, the, the disciples believed. Are you here? Mm -hmm. yeah. They knew he was God. He came in the earth. They worshiped him. Is this fun yet? I'm not sure. I thought I'd throw that out there. It makes us look scholarly here since you're being in school. Right? Well, Jesus called the Spirit Lord. He called the Holy Ghost Lord. When Jesus was on the earth, he, say he, he. Jesus, he. called the Spirit Lord. Who do you think he followed? Who do you think he obeyed? Let's look at it. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The anointing wasn't the Spirit Lord, right? He anointed him and he, he anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me. Now this is a whole other message. I can go on and throw, show you throughout the scriptures that it's the Holy Ghost who sets people into offices. He sends them. The apostles in Acts chapter 13 were sent forth by the Holy Ghost. He said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Holy Ghost. Are you here? Who did it? Holy Ghost. God in the earth. If I make more radical gestures, will you believe me? Jesus called him Lord, and the reason I say that is it says the Spirit of the Lord, but the words of the are added in there so that we can, I suppose, misinterpret it. <laughs> because the Greek just says the Spirit Lord. The Spirit Lord is upon me. Go back to verse 8. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve yeah. say him only, him only shalt thou serve, shalt thou serve. who said this jesus. who is jesus serving in verse 17 the spirit lord was upon me because he's anointed me and he sent me and i'm serving him are you here yeah. thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only serve say him only serve you know who's not doing this just about everybody everybody in this room him only serve him who Holy Ghost see people don't like it when you get that up close and personal but I like it thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve I do this my perspective has changed my perspective is how I see things. It's completely changed since I began worshiping the Holy Ghost as the Lord my God. And I shall worship the Lord my God and Him only serve. And in the only, if you can hear it, in the only is everything. That's when things break open for you. My perspective has changed and is changing when I do this. Say, when I do this. When I do it, I begin to enter into the benefits. And one of the benefits is that my perspective changes. My perspective has changed. But even now it changes. I'm different today than I was yesterday. I'm here from the future I have learned say learned. learned I have learned to worship the Holy Ghost as God I have pushed past the naysayers that say nay, nay. one of which lived right here Mr. Naysayer he was a naysayer before I began speaking in tongues about tongues wasn't he we don't I don't know <laughs> yeah but that that guy's gone now right my perspective has grown my perspective has changed since I've learned to worship him 
the Holy Ghost, the Spirit Lord, as God. Are you here? Amen. Don't say nay. <laughs> Let's just read that verse of Scripture again. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou serve. If you, if you knew Him as God, you would worship Him as God. How can you know Him as God if you weren't exposed to Him being God? Right? You're being exposed to the Holy Ghost being the only God in the earth today. And Him only serve. And you, you don't see the only, you don't see the serving part until you do the first part of the verse. Why does everybody want the second part of the verse before they do the first part of the verse? Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you that in the only is literally everything. Pah! But you have to do the first part of the verse. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only serve. And if I'm going to just only serve him, that means everything has to be in there. Have you hit the wall? Can you take some more? You're like, I think I'm just about full. You know, like when you're eating Thanksgiving dinner until somebody brings the pie and you're like, yeah, I'll have a slice. Yeah, give me one of those. Give me one of those two. You don't have to like me, but I have to say these things. He says, tell them. Are you ready? I don't know, Bobby. Tell them that I am the only God in the earth today. There is no one else. There is no other. On the day of Pentecost, we are in that dispensation. I know you want to be in some other dispensation. Me too. I want to walk with Jesus and skip while holding hands. But you're not in that dispensation. Jesus has left and sent another. Yeah. And if you want to benefit fully in this dispensation, you are going to walk with him. Yeah. The Spirit Lord God in the earth yeah. today. Worship him. Speak in agreement with his word and watch the things he will do for you that he won't do for other people. Yeah. I meet people all the time. I know he's not doing what he's doing for me, for them. They're like, how do you get him to do it for you? They say, got to talk like this. And then he does it for me. Can you handle this? Just let me, let me finish this one section. This literally, I have three sections. This is two sections. You know how it is, right? You're on all these notes. You told me, you know, I've only got one time here. I don't have three time slots. I've got this one. So you're getting three time slots crammed into one. Okay. And I go, ooh. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Tell them I'm the only God in the earth today. And I'm telling you, it's key. This is a key. This is a key. This is a key. This is a key. Amen. What's the key? This? He's the only God in the earth today. Has God ever been big on that? Being the only God? Yeah. You ever remember the commandments there, right? Yeah. I think, excuse my French or whatever it is, I think it pisses him off when we don't call him the only God in the earth today. There is no other. There are scriptures that say, God looked around and I saw no one else. What, Isaiah something. He looked around. You can look it up later. Write it down. You can look it up later. He looked around. He saw no other God besides him. Who would do that in the earth today? There's only one God in the earth today. When the Holy Ghost came into the earth, he could actually stand up and look around and see nobody else. That's a God like him in the earth. Are you here? Yeah. Tell them I'm the only God in the earth. Is that okay? What's the big deal? What's the big deal with him being the only God on the earth today? Stop doing all this other stuff. Worship the only God. Amen. And how do you do it? How do you do it? You open your mouth and you say, I worship you, Holy Ghost. You use those words. 
and those words listen will gain you entrance to a place in the kingdom of God and the person of the Holy Ghost where nothing else can or will you will be totally transformed your life will be completely changed to the point where you don't even know what you were doing before and then you'll stand up in front of people like me waving your hands around and telling them to worship the Holy Ghost as God he's the only God in the earth today get it straight I say that a lot get it straight people don't have it straight people got it squirrely crooked and then you know I come in and I straighten it out and they think I'm they think I'm crazy and squirrely but they were already twisted and I, did I tell you Acts chapter 1 yeah. good yeah. <laughs> yeah you guys are from the future yeah. <laughs> Acts chapter 1 and this is after Jesus was raised from the dead Acts chapter 1 verse 9 and when he had spoken he Jesus when he had spoken these things while they beheld he Jesus was taken up are you here he Jesus was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight physically they couldn't see him anymore he was, he was gone say he was gone he, was gone. he told them he, they were gonna, he was gonna go and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus is this in your Bible yes. what same Jesus this one that was talking to them that went up into heaven while they were looking at him why do you think he did it so specifically and concretely so they wouldn't get messed up and twisted he went away and he went and sat down in heaven and that's what they all began to say Jesus went away you would be just a plain weirdo if you said Jesus didn't go away at that point everybody saw him go away this same Jesus which was taken up from you into heaven where was he taken into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven has this happened yet no. no then where is this same Jesus this Jesus that this one where is he still in heaven still at the father's right hand why cuz he finished his work and when he was raised from the dead and began to speak with them then he was raised from the earth that was my Easter message a few weeks ago Jesus was not only raised from the dead he was raised from the earth when he got out of dead he be you know he was no longer dead when he was raised from the earth he was no longer in the earth and he shall return you can't return from somewhere that you weren't before Am I speaking English? Sometimes I'm. <laughs> so he's still there. Real Jesus. Yeah. Real Jesus. Say real Jesus. Oh, real Jesus. What Jesus do you want? Real, real Jesus or fake Jesus? Real. Real, real Jesus sent the Holy Ghost in Acts yeah. chapter 2. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. Acts chapter 2, verse 32. This Jesus, this Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we were all witnesses. Were they all witnesses of him being raised from the dead? Yes. yes and no. They didn't see him raised from the dead. They were witness. What did they witness? Come on, stay with me. You're, you're all school students now. <laughs> Je this Jesus has God raised wherewith we were all witnesses. Talking about Acts chapter 1, verse 9 through 11, where they witnessed him raised up, yeah. off the earth, away. Yeah. Look what he says next. Is this fun yet? Yeah. verse 33 therefore being by the right hand of God exalted what does being mean the active sense that's where he be yeah. say that's where he be yeah. where be Jesus he be seated at the right hand of the be because he has not yet returned Amen. That's right. That's right. look what he did 
Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, or the promise, the Holy Ghost, he hath set, shed forth this which you now see and hear. And he was talking about over in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, where the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Ghost came in to the earth. The Holy Ghost is God. He's the only God in the earth today. And you should worship him and learn how to walk with him. One of the best ways that you can learn how to walk with him is by opening your mouth and saying, I worship you, Holy Ghost. Are you here? Yes. This is the dispensation of the Holy Ghost that you're in. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, seated, and shall return, and he sent another. Are you mad at me because I preach the gospel? People like you should be, no, this guy's preaching the gospel. I'm preaching the gospel. I'm just showing you something that a lot of people don't touch on because it irritates people. And I'm not trying to irritate you just to irritate you, but it's so you can see where you need to change. Amen. But I, 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 I haven't been worshiping the Holy Ghost as God. I know. You and just about everybody else. But we're making a change. You're making a change. What about you? What about you? Are you going to open up your mouth every day? First thing out of my mouth in the morning. I worship you, Holy Ghost. You are God in the earth today. I walk with you in the earth today by speaking in agreement with your words. I didn't even, wasn't even able to get into that. So, in a recap, worshiping the Holy Ghost is a diversity of operations. It will do something to you. I don't know if I got that across. It will do something to you. Well, I don't want it to do something. Well, don't do it. It will do something. I'm telling you, it'll do something to you. I've, I've literally preached whole messages on this warning people, don't do this. <laughs> because if you like where you're at and your little doctrinal whatever it is, it's going. Well, they never taught us to worship. I know. I find now, I'm from, standing from this position, I'm like, they never taught you to worship God? What's wrong with these people? Worshiping, number one, worshiping the Holy Ghost as God does something to you. It's a diversity of operations. It will do something to you and for you that nothing else will. I got that across? Yeah. And thou shalt worship him. You're told to. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. God is a spirit, and they that worship him. And number two, he's the only God in the earth today. Learn to use your phrases differently. This is one of the things that changes now. That you, be, you come into this. You begin to grow in it. You begin to benefit from knowing him as the only God in the earth today. You stop saying things that you used to say before. Or you say them differently. And it matters. Doesn't it matter? It matters. It matters because we, we're bringing people up whole schooled up into wrong thinking and it takes a long time to beat it out of them and I mean beat it out of them yeah. I have people that have been in my you know my congregation there for 10 15 years and it wasn't only but a few short years ago and they're like man we're so glad we stuck with you we're finally getting it but they stuck with it Amen. and they did it yeah. and the doing of it listen the doing of it is what changes you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Not the knowing of it. Yeah. You can know this all you want, and I think we do now. If I did my job, you at least know it now. It's the doing of it. Yes. Be a doer of the word. Yeah. Be a doer of the word that you've heard today. And let it begin to radically change you. Reorganize your thinking. Reorganize your vocabulary to where you don't say things that you might have said before. That won't come out your mouth because you're a talking temple of the living God. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? What should a temple of the Holy Ghost do? What should a temple of any God do? It's built 
to worship the God that's in the temple. I worship the God that's in the temple. His name is the Holy Ghost. Now, you know, it says your body. So it's what you do with your body. Is your tongue part of your body? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. No, I have no control over it. <laughs> no, your tongue is part of your body. And I'd say it's, it's the number one most important part. If you get a hold of your tongue, it will change everything. It will change your physical body. It will change your finances. My finances are not what they used to be. Not even close. But your tongue, if you get a hold of it, it will radically change everything. What? No, you're not your body. Your tongue, right? What should you say with your temple tongue? I worship you, Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, use of those words will change you. It'll change your ministry. It'll change your finances. It will change your physical body. We worship you, Holy Ghost. Say, we worship you, Holy Ghost. Say, I worship you, Holy Ghost. I worship you, Holy Ghost. Take me into, Take me into that, place that place that these words, that these were, words were, designed were designed to take me. To take me. And I will worship you, will worship you. All, the days all the days of my life, of my life. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. is in heaven. Jesus at his right hand. Your God in the earth.